The Sickness of Earth Society, Part 3. Fossud. In a society ruled by falsehood, lies and artificiality, it is the truth and the genuine that ends up being punished, censured or discredited. Hello again, and I welcome you. Thank you. Although I could make a channel solely dedicated to exposing bits and pieces of the sickness of society on earth, I think this will be the last one for now. And it's about, in this case, what is possibly the factor that bothers and wears me down the most, personally. And I'm sure many of you too. Especially when you start to become aware of a whole theatre, that no matter how hard you try, sometimes you can't make other people see. And you, from the outside, wonder. How is it possible that they are not able to see it, even with the help of someone who shows it to them? It's there, right under their nose. It is the main factor that makes society what it is, or one of the main ones. The one that directs people to learn to support the system among all of them, even if they don't even know why they think the way they think. I'm talking about the sickening falsehood, which reigns there for practically everything. And you don't even have to think about what they give to the population as science, for example, as we talked about in the previous video. You don't even have to think about the history they give to the population as indisputable facts, sometimes even penalizing those who dare to refute them. History is written by the victors, or rather by those who dedicate themselves to writing it and handing it out to the population, because despite what the cabal could think, I don't consider them the victors of anything, even if it burns them. What do you think they will explain in the history books about what happened between 2019 and 2023? Do you think they will explain respectfully and from a neutral and objective position the different ways of seeing the problem that existed? Or do you think that, at most, they will expose the part that does not suit them as a movement that arose from conspiracy nuts? Illiterate, extremist-minded madmen who refuse to see reality. If you think I'm exaggerating, take a look at the history books in a couple of years. What else shapes a society? It's science, it's history. Of course, it's values and ethics. And its values and ethics are influenced by various factors. Starting with religions, which, while appearing to be something completely separate, become for many a great little shelter. It is the compass that guides their lives. It is their home, their comfort, and what gives meaning to their lives. But they are unable to see that they are perfectly structured to implant in people a powerless victim mentality, whose only possible hope and salvation is to do someone else's bidding, and, if you behave yourself, then you will have your reward. An intangible reward that you will not know if you will get until you have finished your life, and therefore you can only live blindly believing what those ancient books say, along with their current representatives, with their repetitive mantras programming little by little the unconscious of all these people. And as if this were not enough, pitting one against the other for defending such a belief system, which in the end is nothing more than that. Beliefs and sensations. But I will tell you something important, and I would like you to listen to it. Afterwards, it's up to you to decide whether it works for you or not. It is one thing to believe in an omnipresent God and creator of everything, based on your own feelings and your own experiences. In your own inner knowing. It is quite another thing to believe in people. When you believe in what one of their representatives, whom I am avoiding naming, says, you are believing in those people. When you believe in what certain books and writings say, you are believing in people because it was people who wrote all those books. And not only that, but over thousands of years, those writings have passed through many hands in power, and many different historical contexts, which you can't check without jumping back in time, and even then it's not reliable sometimes, because of the complexity of time and its different variants, as well as the diffuse and questionable information we get here as well. Do you trust the goodwill and honor of the people in power today? Do you trust their personal interpretations of what is already written, even? 
If the answer is no, then why would you trust those of 2000 years ago, supposedly, and all those who succeeded them throughout that time? Why do you trust all these people more than you trust yourself and your inner knowledge, to take responsibility for your own feelings and beliefs? On the other hand, the values and ethics of the general population nowadays come from the governments themselves, which far from being dedicated to the management of everything of interest to the people, are given over to indoctrinating them and deciding for them what is right and how they should think, what is normal and what is not, what is acceptable and what is punishable, introducing ideas designed to confuse people, taking advantage of people's empathy and desire to do things right. And with those people thinking that what is legal is the right and ethical thing to do, and that their representatives will look after them as they would, we have a nice, perfectly manipulable slave-flavored cake. On the one hand, with religion, they implant the victim mentality. On the other hand, through advertising campaigns and indoctrination in schools about certain ideologies, they create the illusion of empowerment in people who already had power when in fact the fact of making them believe that they need more recognition is precisely to make them believe that they have no such power. In the end, yet another way to create more and more victim mentality. By the way, I would like to emphasize something Marie said very recently and I thought I would mention it as well since it is relevant. Men and women are not the same. We tend to have different physical and psychological characteristics, different tendencies in general, and let's not even talk in scientific terms. And that's fine. There is nothing to change as long as there is mutual respect and cooperation, because we exist to be complementary, and to love each other as we are. Then there are individual differences, of course, and that's fine too. This is a perfect example of an issue whereby confusion is generated from something extremely clear, obvious and basic. One example among dozens of other agendas. And I was saying that you don't even have to stop to think about science, history, religion or moral indoctrination by governments to see the faucet by which the whole earth is governed. Just look around you. Look at the advertising that surrounds you wherever you go. On TV, on the street, on public transport, on your mobile phone, on your food packaging. Of course, it is understandable that you need to promote what you offer on a planet where you need money to live. But, that advertising you see, be honest, how much of it is true, how much of it lies, disguises or exaggerates what you see advertised. To get into a simple job interview, by being completely honest while still highlighting and acknowledging your qualities objectively, there is far less chance of success than by exaggerating or introducing something new. Once in the interview, you should not be too honest either, as this could backfire. You should say exactly what you know they are looking to hear. And they know you're likely to lie, but they're still looking to hear that very thing, which makes zero sense. Once you're being trained, whatever the job is, there's always a part of misleading the client, for more profit or less hassle. A part of exaggerating, decorating and twisting things to embellish whatever it is you sell or do to surprise someone else. In other words, absolutely everything there is a false image. Everything is advertising. Of a product, of yourself, of a reality, of an ideology of the results of scientific studies they are interested in promoting, of absolutely everything. Everything is fossered, and as I said at the beginning, everything genuine and real is punished, not only by those in power or by the people themselves, but because the one who breaks the rules or invents them will always have an advantage. There is this very real disadvantage for those who want to be true and genuine. Even socially speaking, in relationships with each other, many learn how they must appear to be in order to please others and get what they want in return. And then you, who expected others to be sincere and genuine, are surprised when they show their jaws and bite you treacherously, or take from you what they can. I could even connect all this to the image that has been built around what an extraterrestrial should be, or how they should be or look like. 
An image from which, if you step out, you automatically become false, when it is extremely logical, evident and obvious to think things like that we are more people, that we need this or that, or that we have our own insecurities and concerns. To succeed there, as in everything else, I suppose we should conform to the image that our interviewer, the people, expect us to portray. However, that is their reality, and we respect and will always respect it. Not everyone is like you. You need to wake up to that urgently. The software of caring and respecting others is not installed in everyone. The values of respecting unwritten ethical rules are not installed in everyone. Don't give up on being real and genuine ever, and don't be afraid to be so. But be mindful of the planet you are on. That is what you are there for. To make it into something much better. Change starts with you. You are the kind of person you are looking for in this world. You exist. And there are more like you, even if there are fewer of them. Fight with love and respect, simply by being the best version of who you are. A big hug. Zyle of Error.